Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn a synth that's associated with sounds like this. And make it sound more like this. So in this video, we're going to look at how you can make a digital sounding soft synth like Serum sound a lot more analog. Now these techniques are going to work with a lot of other synths. They're, it's not just specific to Serum. Now that being said, if you guys have a need for that analog sound in your music, maybe you're making synth wave or certain subgenres of pop where you just need that sound, there's a lot of great synths out there. Right? Yuhi Diva is a great one. The Arturia V collection has tons of different synths. Synapse, the Legends, one of my favorites as well. But sometimes, you know, you only have one synth, or maybe you're just trying to master Serum, for instance, or maybe it's another synth. Being able to make a, a one synth sound, either digital or analog, is a great tool to have in your tool belt. So let's open up Serum and let's get started. All right, so those two patches, we're gonna be checking those out throughout the course of this video, kind of reverse engineering what makes them sound so analog. Now, if you guys want some analog inspired presets for free, head on over to our site. There's a pack called Stranger Things Volume 2, which is where these two presets are from. And you guys can download that for free. Link is in the description. All right, so the first thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure you're doing, is you wanna make sure you're using the right type of wavetable and waveform within that wavetable. You can see here that this bass patch, for instance, this Moog patch, We're using Moog saw waves, right? That's huge. That's a huge part of this process of making Serum sound more analog. You want to use the analog wavetables. It might seem obvious to those of you out there, but for those of you who are more new to sound design, stay in the analog folder. Or if you need more analog wavetables, you can go over to our site. We have a whole pack, 400 plus wavetables. And in that pack, it's called the core tables. There's an analog folder. And you see here we have tons of the classic synth waves sampled, right? So that's a huge step in the process. If we just change this to another waveform, right, it sounds a lot less analog, a lot more digital. Now, something that you guys might not be considering if you're like, oh, it's a no brainer, use an analog wavetable. Here's something that you also should or shouldn't do, depending on how you're looking at it. Don't modulate the wavetable position. So when you load up a lot of these analog wavetables in Serum, You'll notice that there's a good amount of, of uh, wavetail position morph going on, right? And a lot of the classic synths like a Moog, a Juno, a Jupiter, they didn't have wavetables. They just had a static waveform. So you don't want to mess around with, you know, throwing on an LFO or an envelope on the wavetail position. It'll get you a less than, you know, true sounding analog preset or sound, but it'll still sound more analog than, say, using a digital waveform. All right, the second thing you can do to make Serum sound more analog is to introduce some imperfections, some analog drift into the sound. So what I did was I, uh, we were going to listen to this polyphonic patch again, but I turned off a lot of the oscillators. Right, so it's just that one waveform right now coming from oscillator A. So one way you can introduce analog drift into Serum is to mess around with the phase control. And most uh, analog synths had a phase knob as well. You can see as I manually move that through the phase, we get this kind of warbly sound. Now you can modulate that three different ways to get that analog drift. One way is to use an LFO, an LFO that looks like this and you turn the BPM off, the trigger off, and have it to, at a set to a slow rate and just modulate. Right? Or if you wanted more of a noticeable thing, you could use one of the Chaos LFOs. So you can right click on that knob, go to Mod Source, select Chaos, and if you're thinking, where the hell is the Chaos LFO? Go to the Global tab, it's right here. I like working, if I'm working with a polyphonic thing like this, I like turning on Mono. Basically a Chaos LFO is an LFO that 
can't really be pinned down to one shape, right? For instance, this is a trying trying triangular LFO. Um, this would be like a saw down, ramp up, right? So a chaos LFO is gonna bounce all over the place. So it's great for introducing chaos and imperfection. So it's usually gonna be quite a bit if you just dra if you know if you just set that up. So I usually want to go usually want to go do the mod matrix and turn that down. So let's go find our chaos LFO and turn it down. Right now, a third way you could do it is with another modulator. And it's a modulator that doesn't get used nearly enough in Serum. It's called Note on Random. So basically, it's going to randomize with different notes the phase position in our oscillator. Again, you usually want to go to pop on, pop over to the uh, matrix and turn down the depth of that because it's usually going to be too much. And I like working with bipolar. So you have the type here. So now it's going to go left and right. Right, so lots of different ways to do it. Um, even obviously this this uh, LFO, which is what we're gonna stick with for the rest of the video. So as crazy as it might sound, a lot of the old school classic synths they don't have voices of unison and detune, so you can't do like a super saw by you know by definition on a mini mod. What you can do though is you can manually detune oscillators against themselves or against each other using the fine pitch control or the fine pitch. So we have that option to do that in Serum, and that's more of an authentic way to detune a sound. So try avoiding high unison counts and just cranking the detune up. So this patch that we were working with earlier, this patch you heard, I turned off a couple of the modulations so you can just basically hear the raw sound. And we're using some analog inspired wavetables. Uh, the final patch we did, we did move through the pitch here with an LFO. I turned it off so you guys could hear this fine pitch a little bit better. But you can see I'm using three voices of unison, so the detune's quite tight. And let's use this LFO here to modulate our fine pitch. Right, and that's a really nice amount of movement right there. All right, so a couple bonus tips kind of sent around the a couple of the effects in Serum. So one of the most famous Juno sounds is predicated on a chorus effect. So you can, if you're going for the kind of that saw, that saw Juno sound, mess around with the chords. So you can actually use one of the distortion modes to get kind of that down sampled gritty sound from like the early 80s samplers, like an Emu or a Fairlight CMI. So you can go to down sample. And this will this is basically a bit rate reducer. Right, you can turn up the mix and drive a little bit higher. Take out some of the high frequencies with an EQ, put your course back in there. All right, that's gonna sum up the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, post those below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys aren't, if you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. The support does mean a lot. And if you do, hit that notification bell so you guys get an update when we release new videos. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.